Welcome to sinister serials, where shadows whisper and every tale chills to the bone. Jim. Join us on Macabre Monday for gothic tales shrouded in mist and mystery. Beneath the cloak of night, where shadows whisper secrets of old, lies a tale of curses woven through generations untold. Within these hallowed halls, the McAllister lineage battles a darkness that clings to their very souls. Bound by blood and burdened with breaking the unbreakable, they confront their fate at the stroke of the witching hour. Join us if you dare for Macabre Monday, where each story unfolds a tapestry of terror and tantalizing tales. I ain't incantations she had burned into memory were now augmented by strange addendums and marginalia denoting alterations to the ritual procedure. What craft is this? she whispered. Upon closer scrutiny, a tiny compartment carved into the book's oaken binding came into focus. With bated breath, Lily pried it open using her hairpin. Her nails scraped parchment. Extracting the yellowed scroll unfurled within, fresh excitement gripped her heart. The Rite of Seven Keys. Lily read aloud, her voice trembling. Meant to be performed should the veil of souls be obstructed. This was no mere postscript, but an entirely separate ritual framework predating Eldrick's own era. Heart racing, she pieced together vague references to seven arcane keys, capable of parting the veil by subtle yet tremendous power. Here lay the crucial knowledge they had sought in vain during that first ill-fated attempt. Lily's spirit soared at the implications. The ritual had failed. Yes, and yet perhaps all was not lost. Hope kindled as she rushed back to share these extraordinary revelations with her family. The contest was not yet ended. Their tribulations had furnished the first of seven mythic keys. Now they must seek the remainder. Lily burst into the cavern, brandishing the scroll emphatically. It is not over, she cried, her voice resounding with newfound conviction. Her family turned, confusion and wariness haunting their faces. Swiftly, Lily elaborated on the concealed ritual appendix and the seven mythic keys needed to part the veil. As comprehension dawned, the McAllisters shared tentative smiles of relief and wonderment. Then, our previous failure may have been anticipated, muttered Robert, scarred hands trembling as they accepted the scroll. The disruption. Could it have been a necessary trial revealing this vital knowledge? Lily nodded eagerly. The first key has already been furnished by our tribulation. We need only pursue the remaining six according to these archaic instructions. Her words hung heavy with implication. The keys were unlikely to present themselves freely after all. More ordeals lay ahead, and yet now they would face them with foresight. If this newly uncovered path holds true, our cursed lineage offers blessing as well as doom, Robert proclaimed. Take heart. Secrets stirring in our blood have unlocked the way. Rejuvenated by swelling optimism, the family crowded close, tracing the arcane illusions on the scroll as they forged the details of an illuminated plan. The ritual could be completed, sundered veils made whole. First, however, they must hunt the keys. As the McAllisters reviewed the cryptic instructions, Margaret gave voice to long-simmering doubts. Even armed with eldritch knowledge, how can we prevail where generations before us have faltered? She gestured to the vast, uncharted caverns yawning beyond their glowstone halo. We are out of our depth in this sunken abyss with no trail left to follow. Lily squeezed her mother's hand, meeting her eyes with stalwart empathy. The scroll's revelation of deeper ritual secrets is no happenstance boon. By some design, we have been judged worthy. Our fate shall not mirror those who previously failed the trial. She turned to include the whole family. Within these unhallowed chambers, let our faith and love's light serve as lantern against encroaching dark. Through blind perseverance, we will wrest the remaining keys from destiny's clutch. Hearing Lily's emboldened words, the McAllisters nodded, spirits bolstered by her conviction. Together they had weathered the curse's cruelty. United now, they would see this mystery concluded. Buoyed by newfound motivation, they set to preparing packs for the subterranean journey ahead. If unseen observers judged their actions, then the family would face further tribulations with courage, compassion, and inextinguishable hope burning in their hearts. They would see dawn's glory again. The curse would be broken. 
With basic provisions gathered, the McAllisters discussed how best to pursue the keys scattered throughout the caverns. After heated debate, it was agreed that Robert would take the lead, assembling necessary protections and tools with Constance and Percival. Meanwhile, Margaret and Lily would reference the diary and scroll to chart a course through the subterranean maze. As the two groups dispersed to their separate tasks, a sudden glimmer caught Lily's eye from across the dark lake. There, abutting the cavern wall, stood a statue of an robed woman, one hand extended in invitation, the other clutching an ancient torch now bathed in radiance. Rushing to the water's edge, Lily spotted the source. A crack in the ceiling allowed a single dazzling beam to shine directly upon the carved figure. Behold, Lily cried, the ancestors approve our new path. As the others gathered round in awe, she waded into the frigid water toward the Lady of Light. Gripping the ignited torch, she spoke words that seemed to flow unbidden. We shall bear your flame, Mother of Mystery. Lead us through shadowed veil. In answer, the effigy's crystal eyes flashed, illuminating a partially concealed passage behind the statue. Their quest was set. Strengthened by celestial approval, the McAllisters prepared to abandon their isolated refuge. Blade, lockpick, and eldritch tome readied against the terrors ahead within those primal depths. But they would face the darkness together, emboldened by purpose. The keys awaited. Though the torchborn sculpture augured their passage, apprehension slowed the McAllister's initial progress through the claustrophobic tunnels. But anxiety gradually gave way to awed curiosity as evidence of ancient religious rites manifested. Runestones bearing phallic and serpentine iconography spoke of pagan homage to deities of fertility and renewal. Stained altars hinted at the offering of gory sacrifice. Here in the hallowed guts of the earth, Lily felt certain voracious gods had once held court over primordial query and holy epiphany. The collective fears and hopes of early humanity given shape and terrible voice. She shuddered imagining what brutal tests of faith may have transpired where now there lingered only ossified silence. As they breached the passage into a vast rotunda, relief broke across their faces at glimpsing daylight, though its source remained invisible from their orientation. Gazing upwards revealed a sublime vista of cyclonic clouds orbiting a distant sun in perpetual twilight through a funnel of stony apex open to the heavens. Transfixed by this alien vista, their trepidation abated, as if such grandeur could only signify the mantle of divine protection. Treading now, with less harried step, the family intertwined fingers, bolstered by blood bonds, and a sense of spiritual purpose floating untethered on illimitable possibility. The accursed mansion brooding many leagues above became reduced to trivial abstraction, the banality of its evil no longer relevant in a subterranean cathedral built to elevate the soul beyond earthbound inadequacies. Here, sanctified by trial and wonder, the McAllisters felt freer than they had ever imagined possible, readied at last for the hallowed rite ahead. The sense of boundless possibility faded as they left the Grand Rotunda behind them, their steps faltering once more within the cramped corridor's suffocating embrace. It felt as if the weight of centuries pressed in on Margaret, squeezing the breath from her lungs and replacing that fleeting sensation of boundless potential with leaden resignation. Each footfall reverberated harshly against the unforgiving stone, her muscles thrumming with a painful reminder of their unending pilgrimage deep within the earth's belly. Each labored breath tasted metallic, laced with the scent of the damp earth they disturbed. Another twist, another curve, the oppressive weight of the caverns closed in, threatening to bury any lingering ember of hope under a blanket of despair. Then, as if to mock their plight, a faint luminescence danced on the rough walls ahead. Was it a trick of the eye, a cruel mockery from the cavern itself? A sharp pang of anticipation lanced through Margaret, stirring beneath the oppressive weight of resignation. She would not surrender, not just yet. A smothering weight settled over Margaret as they ventured deeper into the labyrinth. The brief interlude of awe in the Grand Rotunda seemed a distant dream, replaced by the crushing reality of their subterranean pilgrimage. The passage now constricted around them. Its rough walls like the gnarled hands of a vengeful earth spirit, gripping them tighter with each agonizing step. Gone was the momentary sense of transcendent purpose, stolen by gnawing anxieties that nibbled away at her newfound determination. 
every labored breath rasped in her throat, thick with the scent of primeval stone and decay. Despair pressed a heavy hand upon her heart, each echoing crunch of their footsteps on the ancient gravel floor, a stark reminder of their vulnerability. Margaret glanced at Lily, her heart aching with a mother's fierce protectiveness. Her daughter's eyes, though shadowed by exhaustion, were set with unyielding resolution, a flicker of defiance amidst the cavern's crushing apathy. It was a defiance she dared not fail, yet beneath her stoic demeanor, fear had carved out a hollow where hope once bloomed. Just as Margaret feared her inner strength might finally crumble, a subtle shift in the air sent a surge of adrenaline through her veins. There, flickering ahead, was a strange, faint light playing against the darkness. It seemed to pulse in time with her own strained heartbeat. Had exhaustion and despair conjured it, a cruel phantom to torment her weary mind? Or could this be an answer to their ceaseless prayers, a guiding star to cut through the oppressive gloom? She dared not believe it, yet even the possibility spurred her onward, one weary foot in front of the other. With every pained step, that pale gleam grew a shade brighter, an impossible promise in this unforgiving place. With a final surge of determination, Margaret broke free from the captivating illusion of the aurora above. Its swirling lights now felt distant, almost irrelevant. Instead, her focus was drawn downward, back to the source of the light that seemed to thrum from beneath the earthen floor itself. Her gaze fell upon a sight that stole her breath away. There, weathered and adorned with enigmatic carvings, stood a forgotten altar. The pale glow permeating the cavern seemed to rise from its depths like a spectral beacon. Time was irrelevant here, and she could almost feel the weight of its forgotten prayers and untold histories weighing upon her spirit. Ancient etchings, worn and blurred, snaked their way across the stone surface, hinting at untold rituals and a connection to forces beyond their understanding. An inexplicable impulse drew Margaret forward, each step propelled by a sense of inevitability. As she neared the altar, the cool touch of its monolithic surface against her palm felt like a homecoming. With trembling fingers, she reached out and traced a faded inscription etched into the stone. A glyph representing a sun, or perhaps an eye, watching omnipotently from some shadowed domain. This place, bathed in the otherworldly luminescence, had an undeniably potent energy to it. It thrummed with a mixture of promise and warning, both tantalizing and unsettling. Questions echoed in the back of her mind. Had countless generations sought solace and communion here? Could this be the source of the curse they so desperately sought to break? With every passing moment, Margaret felt pulled further into the strange allure of this place, aware that within this subterranean shrine, a pivotal chapter in the McAllister family's long saga was about to unfold. As Margaret's fingertips lingered upon the altar, it vibrated faintly beneath her touch. Startled, she jerked her hand back as a ripple of luminescence surged outward from the point of contact. The light coursed across the carved symbols, animating them and casting grotesque shadows onto the cavern walls. It was as if the altar responded to her presence, awakening after untold centuries of slumber. A tremor echoed through the caverns, not like the subtle shudder from before, but a deep, unsettling rumble that rattled the stalactites above. Dust showered down from the vaulted ceiling, the faint scent of old stone and disturbed earth heavy in the still air. The spectral aurora in the heavens flickered and pulsed with the growing subterranean tremors. Was this a blessing, or the heralding of some greater danger lurking within the cavern's core? Before she could ponder this further, a low hum filled the cavern, growing from an almost imperceptible drone to the urgent whine of a swarm of disturbed wasps. It emanated from the very darkness behind the altar, from the inky shadows that even the ghostly gleam couldn't pierce. Suddenly, Margaret was gripped by a sense of imminent upheaval. There were forces lurking here, and the touch of her hand upon the altar had roused them. The McAllisters were on the precipice of change, for better or for worse. With this realization came a jolt of pure resolve. It didn't matter what dangers lay ahead. Fear mingled with her determination, yet now Margaret felt a clarity not experienced since the curse had stolen its insidious way into their lives. They wouldn't turn back. Not after coming this far, not when this forgotten place might hold the answers they so desperately sought. 
The hum in the dark recesses behind the altar intensified into a cacophony of frantic buzzing, threatening to overwhelm the stillness. It was joined by an acrid smell, metallic and unfamiliar, rising from the shadowy depths. Margaret's gaze flickered from her family, faces tense in the glow of the pulsating altar, toward the looming chasm of blackness beyond. She took a steadying breath, summoning every ounce of courage. Gather close, her voice barely a whisper in the din. Yet a hush fell over her family. They huddled near, drawing strength from this moment of shared determination. Margaret held their gazes, the weight of expectation settling over them. There was no turning back, no place of safety here. The McAllisters had awoken something slumbering within this subterranean maze. It wouldn't rest until they had faced it head on. Margaret turned and placed her palm once more on the cool surface of the altar. For a brief, pregnant moment, there was only silence, punctuated by the hammering of her heart. Then the tremor rippled through the cavern once again, sending pulsations across the ancient ground at their feet. With one last shared glance filled with unshakable hope, Margaret and her family braced themselves for whatever lay ahead in the labyrinth's shadowed depths. The tremor coursing beneath their feet spiked suddenly, and the once solid ground split open with a sound like ancient bone. Before even a startled gasp could be uttered, a yawning chasm tore itself across the cavern floor. It gaped before the McAllisters, exhaling a rush of foul, chilling air from the darkness within. The fragile progress toward the altar was undone in an instant, their path forward severed by this new, terrifying obstacle. The chasm snaked ominously from wall to wall, its depth lost to the inky blackness swirling in its depths. Jagged spires of rock jutted towards the surface, grotesque teeth ready to consume anyone who dared attempt to cross it. Margaret squeezed Lily's hand tightly, protectiveness warring with the icy tendrils of fear slithering along her spine. Her pulse throbbed in her ears, mirroring the echoing groans of stone as the tremors settled into a menacing rumble. Each ragged breath tasted of stale air and grit as a veil of dust clouded the cavern. Above, the ethereal aurora faltered and seemed to retreat higher, swallowed by the cavern's oppressive darkness reborn. Their moment of hopeful connection to the altar was dashed. Here, at the crux of this subterranean world where ancient powers held sway, the true danger of their endeavor revealed itself. Margaret tightened her grip on her loved ones. It was no longer just a fight to break free from a curse, but a desperate struggle for survival. For a breathless moment, only paralyzing shock held sway. Then, reality crashed back in. They had no time to stand awestruck in the face of danger. Panic crackled within Margaret's breast, threatening to drown out the relentless drumming of her heart. She fought to retain composure, reminding herself that despair would cripple them. The chasm wasn't merely a natural fissure. It was a physical manifestation of the curse, designed to instill fear and break their fragile unity. She wouldn't give it that satisfaction. Her gaze traced the chasm, its yawning maw a grotesque parody of the natural beauty they'd so recently been immersed in. Each sharp stone tooth seemed alive, ready to snatch them into the impenetrable darkness. Yet, within her fear, a fierce spark ignited. They couldn't go back. It wasn't about just the altar anymore. It was about every moment in their bleak manner where this insidious energy lingered, threatening to tear them apart from the inside out. The only way was forward, to break through. Before doubt could gnaw away at her determination once more, she knelt to the ground, ignoring the sharp stones cutting into her knees. Margaret dug her fingers into the rough earth, feeling a sense of primal connection to this ancient underworld. In this cavern, the veil between the physical and ephemeral seemed thin. Perhaps in a place like this, impossible solutions may reside, buried beneath centuries of silence. It was a small hope, yes, but all the McAllisters had at the moment. And hope, Margaret knew, was a stubborn and powerful thing. Margaret rose, the faintest outline of a plan taking shape in her weary mind. Her gaze was unwavering as she turned to her family. We find another way, she declared, her voice firm despite the tremor beneath the surface. Robert frowned, the crease above his brow deepening. There likely isn't one. Look at this. He gestured dramatically, highlighting the chasm's treacherous expanse. This is madness. The word lingered in the air, echoing their unspoken anxieties. Lily shifted uneasily beside him, 
the fear in her eyes palpable. Perhaps this is where our journey ends. Lily's voice was small, trembling slightly with desperation masked as resignation. The altar, it was just meant to give us hope, right? An empty promise. Perhaps it's a sign. Anger spiked in Margaret, not directed at Lily, but at the suffocating doubt swirling around them. No, she spat, sharper than she intended. Yet almost instantly she softened her tone. Lily, don't speak like that. There's always a way. Before she could elaborate, Robert scoffed. With all due respect, my love, your optimism is admirable. But there are some forces even courage can't overcome. Do you propose we leap across like mad goats? A hint of sarcasm stung in his words, born more from frustration than a true desire to undermine her. Margaret pressed a hand to her forehead, massaging a spot where a dull ache throbbed. Robert was right to be concerned. Yet there was something deep within her, an intuition more akin to instinct, that told her their quest mustn't end here. It couldn't. The chasm breathed out another choking blast of icy air, swirling up particles of grit that stung their skin. Robert gripped Lily's shoulder tighter against the sudden gust, bracing them both against the malevolent energy pulsating from the ground below. As the last vestiges of the chilling breeze dispersed, Margaret noticed a strange shift in the cavern's ambience. The silence that followed wasn't a comforting calm, but a predatory quiet, as if the cavern itself was holding its breath. An uneasy prickle crawled up her spine. Listen, she hissed, holding up a hand. Do you hear that? A faint rustling sound echoed from the chasm, barely audible against the ceaseless drip of water from unseen heights. It grew subtly louder, not the random noise of disturbed rock, but an almost rhythmic scraping. Something was stirring within the depths below. Each scrape whispered of malice, of something eager to claw its way up into their fragile sanctuary. What in God's name? Robert muttered, a mix of bewilderment and apprehension lacing his voice. Even Lily, with her ever-present trace of childlike wonder, shivered, face turned ghostly pale in the pulsating glow of the bioluminescence. There was no warmth in this eerie luminescence, no echo of the sacred radiance emanating from the altar. This light seemed cold, almost hungry. Suddenly a gleam, not the soft glow of moss, but something sharp and brittle. Then another. Tiny pinpricks of light emerged from the abyss like a swarm of vengeful stars. Panic thrummed through Margaret. As her eyes adjusted to the spectacle, an icy realization crashed over her. Those lights weren't stars at all. They were eyes. Dozens. Hundreds. Glaring up from the darkness, fixed on the McAllisters like insects awaiting their next hapless victim. Robert instinctively drew his wife and daughter closer, forming a protective, defiant huddle. Saints preserve us. What have we unleashed? His voice trembled, not from weakness, but the stark recognition of their desperate situation. Even at his most skeptical, even with his feet planted firmly in the realm of the tangible, something within him now sensed the true depth of their entanglement with the malevolent forces haunting these caverns. There must be a way, Margaret repeated, her voice barely above a whisper. Her mind raced, seeking some desperate shred of logic amid the growing supernatural horror. It felt foolish now, their earlier triumph at the altar, that fleeting respite amidst the relentless siege of encroaching darkness. Perhaps this chasm hadn't just formed. Maybe it had always waited here, ready to swallow them whole should they venture too far, guided by blind hope and fleeting courage. She closed her eyes against the dizzying spectacle of those unblinking, inhuman orbs and reached deep within herself. In the depths of her despair, her fingers brushed against a small, cool object in her pocket. The silver locket passed down through countless generations of McAllister women. Its touch felt both grounding and unsettling in this twisted space. In her heightened awareness, a voice seemed to whisper at the edge of her consciousness, soft, ethereal, almost inaudible beneath the ceaseless drip of water and the rising din of whatever creature clawed its way up through the abyssal depths. The voice said simply, observe. Her eyes shot open. Could it be? Were these words of wisdom from an ancestor, a benevolent presence hidden deep within the very earth that sought to destroy them? Or was this some cruel trick orchestrated by a force determined to see their utter ruin? In her heart, Margaret dared not cling to blind hope, yet couldn't bring herself to fully submit to despair. Her only choice was forward. It always had been.
Her gaze moved across the abyss, drawn to the swirling bioluminescent flora adorning the cave walls. Even its strange luminescence appeared tainted now, pulsating in time with the unseen horror rising unseen from the depths. For the first time, she perceived this cavern not as a place of wonder, but a twisted parody of it, a place where darkness masquerades as light. The relentless rusting grew nearer, echoing off the ancient walls as something clawed its way upward from the chasm's stygian depths. Margaret huddled near her family, every nerve singing with tension. As her heart pounded in her throat, the bioluminescence cast eerie, twitching shadows that seemed to pulse and slither alongside the unseen horror. Her fingers reached for the locket once more. Its coolness now offered little comfort, and she feared, in her most vulnerable moments, that it offered mere false hope. Then, through the haze of despair, came a sound far less sinister. A rhythmic scraping, almost metallic, but not born from the chasm's malevolent presence. It originated ahead, in the deeper recesses of the cavern. A new source of apprehension filled Margaret. Not the chilling fear of the abyss, but wariness of the unknown. As a figure drew nearer, what had initially appeared as a weapon transformed under the eerie cavern light into a geologist's hammer. This shift only accentuated the sense of mystery surrounding him. Margaret found herself both repelled and strangely drawn to the stranger's presence. An inexplicable comfort clung to the worn lines of his face, his eyes shimmering with both sadness and determination, emotions that echoed her own inner turmoil. He spoke with a gruff rasp, breaking the stillness with a surprising strength. Well now, who might I have stumbled upon? If my eyes don't deceive me, that's surely the McAllister clan they whisper about. Then his gaze settled on Margaret. Don't look so startled, lass. Your family's echoes linger heavy in these caves. Who are you, stranger? Robert stepped forward, the protectiveness in his voice tinged with undeniable suspicion. Is this another trick of this foul place? Another phantom conjured to torment us? The man tilted his head, a touch of amusement playing on his lips. Some whisper I'm a mere historian, forever digging at the past others would prefer left buried. Others, well, let's just say they tell different tales around their campfires. His eyes flitted across the cavern, seemingly searching for an unseen presence. Your secrets are woven deep into this mountain's heart, McAllister. Deeper than you know. He reached into the folds of his heavy cloak, and Margaret's breath caught in her throat. It was a well-worn volume, its cover embossed with cryptic symbols. He offered it forward with a knowing look. Perhaps there are shadows entwined with your history that even you haven't confronted. Shadows I've spent... A lifetime studying. A wave of doubt crashed over Margaret. Every instinct yearned for knowledge, for any path that led to answers. This stranger was their sole lifeline, offering them respite from the horrors that seemed to coil around them. Yet, within his gentle smile lurked an undeniable hint of, was it darkness or merely shared pain? His eyes, so vivid in this otherworldly gloom, bore an undeniable kinship with this spectral environment. It frightened her, and yet... Inexplicably, it was also familiar. There are consequences to unearthing forgotten things, she uttered, the words rasping in her throat. Some things have their reasons for staying hidden. Indeed. The historian nodded, a grim understanding washing over his face. His voice dropped to a conspiratorial whisper. Perhaps they aren't hidden enough. Perhaps some things have been waiting, yearning for release. He glanced toward the chasm, where the relentless scraping had now fallen into a chilling silence. This final cryptic remark fueled Margaret's rising anxieties. He could have been referring to the thing lurking beneath, or his own hidden agenda. Her gaze returned to the worn book. Answers? Or another labyrinth she dared not step into? A ripple of shock passed through the McAllister family as the historian placed the cryptic volume on a ledge just beyond their reach. My name he paused, as if weighing the potential impact of the revelation. It is Elias Blackwood. The name seemed to ignite something within Margaret, stirring a vague recognition she couldn't place. Had she heard whispers of an outsider bearing that name in the village pubs? Some fragment of local lore clung to its edges, something more than mere history. Then came his next words, which jolted them to the core. There are consequences to unearthing forgotten things, she voiced the words tasting both of warning and resignation. Some things stay hidden for a reason. 
Indeed. Elias nodded. Yet, haven't the McAllisters suffered the consequence of things left too long in shadow? You've carried burdens no clan should be forced to endure. His gaze remained intense, yet softened by an unnerving touch of melancholy. Did he see reflected in them the pain of his own undisclosed wounds? A subtle shift resonated within Margaret. Could it be? She'd assumed they were alone in their plight. This man, seemingly birthed from this twisted underworld, spoke with an undeniable kinship. Yet his motives and true alignment remained agonizingly opaque. The book thrummed with unanswered questions. Were they about to stumble into another trap? Or had this spectral cavern just released its only ray of hope? With trembling hands, she pushed the offered tome back in his direction. It is our family's curse to understand these secrets, whether we wish to or not, she conceded, a steely edge entering her voice. If what you say is true, perhaps you share in that burden. The corners of Elias's lips quirked upwards in a semblance of a smile. It is possible, he replied, that we all have been drawn to this place for some purpose greater than preserving the darkness. A subtle gleam shimmered in his eyes. If you're looking for a mere scribe, well, I suspect you'll be sorely disappointed. What awaits ahead could reshape not only your destiny, McAllister's, but that of this entire land. With that cryptic pronouncement, he took a step forward, his worn boots brushing against the dust of ages. In the flickering luminescence, a faded emblem was momentarily visible on his sleeve, a sun engulfed by thorns. Did it represent some ancient society, forgotten allegiance, or something far more sinister? As he extended the ancient text once more, Margaret found herself torn between primal terror and a desperate need for the very truths he seemed to embody. This wasn't simply an offering of knowledge, but a choice that would seal their fate. The weight of her ancestors seemed heavy within the locket clutched tightly in her hand, each echo of the past pushing her toward an uncertain future. Her instincts recoiled in fear from the enigma that was Elias, from the chilling sense that they were awakening shadows far greater than they fully comprehended. Elias Blackwood was no mere guide, he was a gateway, and behind it lay truths and risks too terrible to fully contemplate. But as Margaret glanced at her family, at the fear mingled with stubborn resolve reflected in their faces, her determination solidified. Whatever peril lay ahead, they would face it together, just as generations of McAllisters had weathered the storms of their bloodline. Elias waited just ahead, bathed in the ghostly luminescence. Each flicker of moss beneath his weathered boots seemed to thrum in rhythmic agreement with the pounding of Margaret's heart. With a gesture toward the tome, he murmured, Perhaps. I'm simply the first chapter in a tale you must finish writing yourselves. As if his words carried an unseen power, a breeze stirred within the cavern's stagnant air, and with it, an odor even more ancient than the damp stone. It whispered of parchment and bone, stirring buried memories and a nauseous mix of awe and fear. Margaret exchanged a worried glance with Robert, both silently agreeing. There was no going back. They were bound to this path now to answers no matter how monstrous. Elias led them onwards, navigating a passage that twisted and wound with unnatural smoothness. The bioluminescence dimmed, swallowed by unseen crevices. Their eyes began to adjust, revealing details previously shrouded in shadows. Each twist of the tunnel exposed cryptic carvings upon the rough-hewn walls, not runes or familiar symbols, but crude images resembling teeth? And were those skeletal figures clawing their way upwards? Fear pulsed within Margaret. Was this a path into something even deeper, an echo from the very genesis of evil itself? Then, just ahead, a new source of light appeared. A crack in the cavern wall led into a chamber seemingly untouched by time. The sight that unfolded both captivated and horrified. Countless relics hung heavy from the arched ceiling and stood as sentinels amongst ancient stone tables. Tarnished trinkets of unknown origin mingled with bones of varying sizes, some uncannily human, others clearly fragments of creatures never meant to walk the earth. Gods forgive us, Robert whispered, his hand on his wife's arm. Elias placed a gnarled hand on the nearest table, as if drawing strength from its forgotten occupants. This place, it isn't a product of your curse, McAllisters. It predates that, and even the history your clan carries. His voice echoed strangely in the chamber, thick with a reverence only half comprehensible. This place, 
it might be where it all began. The curse wasn't created here, not at first. It was found. Perhaps brought through that fissure from the lightless, heartless world below. A tremor shot through Margaret as she realized the enormity of what Elias's discovery represented. Gone was the illusion that the curse plagued their clan alone. Now, this shadowed cavern revealed an older, primal evil. They didn't just seek freedom from their inheritance, but survival against a force whose darkness seemed to predate history itself. The fight ahead threatened to engulf them all, casting doubt on any possibility of genuine victory. What does this mean? Lily's voice was barely a whisper against the chamber's haunted silence. Elias turned towards the light spilling in from the crack. It means... He paused, taking a deep breath. It means... Your battle may have become bigger than even you understood. A grim understanding seemed to dawn across his features. But with greater understanding comes greater choice, greater possibility. Elias seemed transformed, not with joy, but a terrible realization mingling with grim determination. You fight, just as your ancestors did, but fight armed with truths they were denied. He glanced towards the fissure from which they'd stumbled into this forgotten underworld. That is why I was here. Why we were all drawn here. His words struck Margaret like a blow. Manipulation? Destiny? There was no time to untangle the complexities of it. She stared at the ancient tome in Elias's grasp, her fingers instinctively reaching out towards its pulsating cover before abruptly retreating. Her locket now burned against her skin, a physical reminder of the generations who lived and died, consumed by a darkness even older than this accursed place. Robert stepped forward, placing a firm hand on his daughter's shoulder. No surrender lingered in his eyes now, only an awareness of the monstrous forces aligning against them. Determination sparked within Margaret, mirroring her husband's. They had already sacrificed so much, retreating wasn't an option. Even if this newfound knowledge only led deeper into a maw of ancient evil, it was now their only weapon against annihilation. The room seemed to shift with a groan of ancient stone, the shadows twisting as if sensing a change in the balance of power. This was a precipice, and on the other side awaited a truth that would change everything. Their understanding of the past, their place in this unfolding cosmic struggle, and maybe, just maybe, a glimpse of how to defy a destiny seemingly designed for destruction. With a shuddering breath, Margaret finally reached out, fingers trembling against the cool leather cover of Elias's tome. As if in response, the cavern around them seemed to shudder, and somewhere beyond the shadows and stone, an unseen roar of primal hunger pierced the fragile calm. Welcome to Sinister Serials, where shadows whisper and every tale chills to the bone. Join us on Macabre Monday for gothic tales shrouded in mist and mystery. Twisted Tuesday will unravel your mind with psychological thrillers that blur the line between reality and madness. On Weird Wednesday, cosmic horrors from beyond the stars will haunt your dreams. Thriller Thursday brings tales of survival, where every shadow could be your last. Fantasy Friday weaves stories of ancient magic and mythical beasts. Sci-Fi Saturday launches you into dark futures and alien terrors. And on Supernatural Sunday, ghostly whispers and paranormal mysteries will leave you questioning what's truly beyond. Step into the darkness with us. The stories are just beginning.